UFO they think maybe he was a uh, drug runner or trying to sell the plane or go elsewhere. There was uh, rumors that he was running with a girlfriend away and all these sort of things. They were, then after we realized they were all stupid, but at the time, certain people take seriously. Michael, is it possible for a pilot to become so disoriented that he uh, could fly upside down? Yes, it is. and. Uh... Uh, I'd like to make the point that uh, no one knows what has happened in this instance, and we know we can't discount that there was in fact a UFO. QM. Missing UFO pilot Frederick Valentich may have crashed while flying upside down, a Department of Transport Authority said today. The department believed it was possible the pilot became disorientated and was seeing the lights of his own aircraft reflected in the water. There's no way that you can lose control of an aeroplane, and basically when you do become disorientated, um, uh, it's called spatial disorientation. You've lost control of the aeroplane. Uh, you fight to regain your orientation, and it, it, it is, you know, it's quite a strange feeling, really. And uh, there's no way that you can speak on the radio like he was talking to me. It's not as if it's happening to you and you don't know about it. As he was flying inverted in the fading twilight. Of course, what they failed to mention is a Cessna 182 is unable to fly upside down for longer than two or three seconds without stalling, and the conversation lasted for seven minutes. An actor's recreation, based on the official transcripts, is all that's left of that night's conversation. No one has, has heard the tapes except you and a few other select people, but there have been... They have taken it down, though, and uh, you could read it somewhere. If you oh, yes, yes, yeah, the transcript, yeah. yeah. So, so he, he said, said he, he cited an object. object. That's, that's right. right. The Department of Transport is refusing to release its tape recording of missing pilot Frederick Valentich's description of his confrontation with a UFO. The spokesman would not elaborate publicly on why the tape recording of Valentich's final moments could not be released. But a Sydney ufologist told the fourth annual UFO conference that investigators and officials should think before releasing things to the media because it often led to sensational publicity and harassment of the individuals concerned. He noted the sensitivity of the family must be respected. Well, that's when I sort of started to feel that it can't be an aircraft if it's operating like that. seems to indicate that he was looking at it and it just disappeared. Twenty-three, twenty-four are the, the power settings for a Cessna 182. So what he was indicating was he had the aircraft set to cruise power and it was, um, as he said, coughing. It was running rough. He was in greater trouble, right? Well. The chances are he may have lost power to the extent where he was unable to maintain height and, of course, would ditch in the ocean. And then the last transmission, he seemed to me as if he was right in the middle of his transmission, a little confused. He got the, his call sign and my call sign back to the front and uh, it seemed that he was halfway through his transmission when his communications started breaking. And uh, that was the end. I suppose I said to myself a couple of times, gee, is this real, you know? And just doubt. Had it happened, or was it a hoax, conflicting with the fact that it, he seemed so, um, I suppose, genuine in what he was uh, saying. It was, it was upsetting, you know, somebody's obviously uh, disappeared and uh, there's a good chance that uh, they may have died. The mystery deepened last night after hundreds of sightings of UFOs were reported from Geelong, Frankston, Cape Otway and further along the coast, of which three reports were made up to three hours before Valentich's flight. To him, uh, UFR were a real thing when he was just a young 
15 years old at high school, he was actually having fear, he was scared of the UFO that come and divided the family. As he became more mature and he understand more about it, he came back with a certain, with a different opinion and a different philosophy on UFO. The last 12 months, he virtually convinced me and my wife of UFO existence. But he's not, never been fanatic. Any aviator has got an interest in it. It's an unknown. I mean, I, it's an unknown. But it's flight. You're always interested in it. You saw something, and he reported that something. See, by reporting it, he jeopardised his commercial pilot rating. So there had to be something there. He was a young bloke, aspiring to be a commercial pilot, seeing UFOs. <laughs> How's that going to look on your record when you go to get your licence? I was quite mystified, extremely mystified. We never ever discussed those kind of things. Um, we kept in no files at Air Training Corps headquarters on UFOs. We had other, uh, other things to do. Uh, to me, I have no uh, 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 beliefs in UFOs, although uh, I have no, not a great disbelief. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. You get people that are religious, and uh, they might think, well, if you believe in God, uh, there could be angels, uh, UFO, but not necessarily being evil. Uh, most of the people believe that we are not the only one in this universe. They got to be another civilization somewhere, uh, like in a plain way to say, you know, you, he don't have one limb on a lemon tree only. I believe in, in really in God. I don't know what is God, but I believe something. Sometimes I pray, I say, uh, God give me another 20 years to live. Maybe in 20 years something happen. You know what I mean? Look, even some, perhaps UFO could be something, uh, or American or German or whatever, or Japanese or Russian. They create something and we don't know. We put the UFO name because we don't know what is that. UFO does mean come from other planet. I believe in God, but it's only what you hear, isn't it? It's, it's, the Bible's been translated so many times. I mean, it's just like UFOs, isn't it? <laughs> you don't know if it's real or not. I think he's alive. And I had this, like, you know, you get this gut feeling that he's still alive. But where, I don't know. Because there's no facts there, you know, to say, yes, he, he's dead, you know? Well, all the facts said that if he was in the water more than 12 hours, he'd be frozen to death because the water was coming off the Antarctic at that time of the year. Um, we hoped and hoped, I suppose, for three or four weeks. I've only recently, I think, accepted it. The fact that he has gone, finished, it's over, it's done, that he's dead. I've lost a friend, a uh, good friend, uh, and a good member of staff. And uh, you don't get over those things, really. Uh, you, you never forget. I felt virtually on the night it happened he died. I don't think the aeroplane is anywhere but uh, at the bottom of Bass Strait somewhere. No, never. He's dead. Some people, they try to convince me he's somewhere dead, but I never, I'm not accept, and no, I, ne no. I never will accept that anyway. No. Well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't not accept it. You know, he's got maybe killed, but providing that someone comes with a true fact and theory that it did happen. Well, Guido, all I can say is I hope that uh, you keep mm. hoping and I hope that your hopes come true. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I really want to find out if there are UFOs or not for the sake of mm. finding them, but I hope that you do too, and I hope that uh, okay. you can once again be reunited with your son, maybe. Good. Okay, thanks for coming in tonight. ...to the world of the occult and take a look at devil worship. And we meet a man whose son was kidnapped by aliens in a spaceship. We'll in a mystery that's exactly seven years old. The coroner says there's simply not enough evidence to justify an inquest.
More in a moment. You remember that 10 years later, Fred has uh, never been found, but his father Guido believes that uh, his son is still alive, possibly even held by aliens, as mm. some people suggest. Would you please welcome uh, Guido Valentich? I wonder if he had been taken aboard a UFO and had come back, would anyone believe him? More in a moment. Okay, got one moment. Okay, roll 16. <laughs> <laughs>